Sometimes the best pets are the ones you've never heard of, and I'm willing to bet that this snake next year will be the most popular snake you can think of. So today, let's go over why spotted pythons and all of their cousins are going to be super popular in 2024. My name's Adam, this is Jimmy, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Okay, okay, so maybe not more popular than corn snakes and ball pythons, but in terms of snakes that weren't popular before but are now, I don't think anything is going to gain as much popularity as quickly as spotted pythons. Now, spotted pythons, if you're not aware, you've probably heard of children's pythons. Now, children's pythons are actually in the same genus. It's called Antaresia. Pygmy pythons, which are the smallest python in the entire world, are also in this genus. And then children's pythons are actually Stinson's pythons now, so they're the same thing. And spotted pythons, which are the largest of the genus, but still only get to about four feet on average. Now, keep in mind, these snakes can, of course, have outliers, right? The average human man in America, anyway, is what, like 5'11 or something like that? But then there's also the Shaquille O'Neal's of the world, so of course there's gonna be outliers. And I've actually seen a spotted python that was six feet, two inches. Just a monster of a snake. Now, of course, that's not gonna be super common. And this is a three, maybe four year old male. I've been shooting videos in this house for three years now, and I got Jimmy a year before I moved here. So he's four years old, and this is about as big as he is. Now, of course, females will get bigger than males, as with a lot of different python species. And because they're an arboreal species from Australia, oh, by the way, Australian viewers, you guys can keep these, you guys know that already. If you don't know, Australia, if you live there, you can only keep native things mostly. They have axolotls for some reason. Anyway, the point is, these guys are arboreal or semi-arboreal. And the reason I love semi-arboreal snakes is because they act a little bit different. The way that they feel when you handle them is a little bit different. This is a tiny little snake. I mean, I am not a very large man, just to put this in perspective, okay? And these guys are way stronger, way stronger than a ball python, even at a small size like this. Now let's go over some of the reasons I think they're gonna be popular. I think that they're much more available now because people have figured out how to breed them. And also there's a few morphs that are coming up as well, because at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, especially if we're talking about the States, most of Europe, Canada, Australia, I mean, these are capitalistic societies where you're not gonna breed things that aren't gonna make you money. And if there's not a lot of morphs or the natural looking species or the natural looking morph, I guess, isn't expensive or lucrative to breed, then you're not going to do it because what's the point? You're not gonna be making any money. You're gonna be paying to breed them, which just doesn't make sense from a business perspective. So with the introduction of more morphs that are available, of course, Australia has all the cool ones, but Australia doesn't export animals anymore. So what we have here is what we have here. That's kind of it. But with that, there is a little bit more money involved or being able to be made by the breeders. Not only that, but they're just popular. And because they do put out quite a few eggs at a time for such a small python, you can make at least a decent profit by breeding one pair, a few pairs, a few females to a male, that type of thing, even if they are the natural coloration like you see here, which I think is beautiful by the way. They have these crazy spots. It's almost like this tan rust with this brown and then going into blacks. Their eyes are orange. They are, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful snakes on the planet and I'm so lucky that I have one. Now these guys aren't very fragile, even though they're small, but with that in mind, make sure that you're not just handing this thing to a child. Make sure that the child is being watched, you're supervising, because at the end of the day, it is a living animal and uh, I mean, it's this small, so don't drop your spotted python. So a four foot snake, I mean, what is so impressive about that? Well, it's not the impressive factor, and that's the same thing with ball pythons too. I wouldn't call ball pythons very impressive at all. I think ball pythons are a great size, but they need a little bit bigger of an enclosure than something like a spotted python. Now, I personally believe, actually, now that I say that to contradict myself immediately, you would be better off with a taller enclosure for something like a spotted python, maybe even say like a three foot tall enclosure because they are semi-arboreal and it's super fun to watch them. So isn't the whole point of owning amazing animals that they're fun for you to watch and interact with and give the best life to? Because at the end of the day, this is sort of a selfish pursuit. We're not keeping these animals because we're researchers trying to repopulate endangered species. 
we're doing it for us. So if you want to do it for you, make it the most enjoyable possible and make it as great as possible for the animal as well. So give it something that's a little bit taller for sure. And they will reward you because these animals do move quite a bit. I mean, this is the first time this animal has kind of just chilled out in my arms here, but normally he's moving and grooving all the time, especially during the night because they are crepuscular or some would say nocturnal animals that are most active during dawn, dusk, and at night. Now being that they're pythons, as with most pythons, every python in fact, except for woma pythons and black-headed pythons, they have heat pits. So they're gonna be looking for a heat signature to get their food. And they're actually really great eaters. These animals are not gonna have any issues eating like some ball pythons will or hognose snakes when they're babies. I never had any issues getting my spotted pythons to eat once they got eating. But that is the responsibility of the breeder to do. So once you get yours from a breeder, then they're gonna be eating just fine. Sure, I had to do a little bit of assist feeding with this guy when he was a baby. I got it from someone who knew that I was capable of doing that. And once he took his first meal on his own, wham, bam, Bob's your uncle, he hasn't refused since. Now this is not a great snag for cohab. I don't think that they have like this crazy reputation for eating each other, but it's not unheard of. So if you're going to be putting babies together for a short time, you're probably okay. If you're gonna be breeding them and you know what you're doing, you'll probably be okay. But definitely don't keep these animals together full time. Uh, I just don't really recommend it. It doesn't matter if it's two males, two females, a male, female, it doesn't matter. Don't keep these guys together full time. It's not something I'd recommend. Now in terms of temperature and humidity, they like it a little bit drier. They like it warm, but not too hot. So kind of what you'd expect for Australia. I mean, they're not gonna be like an Aki or uh, a bearded dragon. They don't need it that warm, but they're definitely going to be using say like rocky outcrops if you create that, bricks, things like that to bask on or bask under or get the heat of once the light goes off. So that's what I like to do. Now, of course, this is not a full care guide. There is one in the top left-hand corner here if you wanna watch it or top right-hand corner, wherever they are. Either way, I think that I've been talking about these guys for so long and a long time ago, I did so many videos about Antaresia in general, people started to like think I was some Antaresia shill. I'm not, I've never bred them, I have one. I'm making no money off promoting them but they are really cool. And if you can find one, scoop them up because I truly do believe they're gonna be super popular. I mean, realistically, an animal that's fun to handle, it's really reluctant to bite you, knock on wood as I handle this animal. Generally, as long as you don't smell like rats, you're okay. They're gonna be pretty docile, pretty calm, smooth. They're not gonna move super fast, which is my issue with a lot of smaller type snakes is that I think that they move too fast for me you're not gonna have that issue with a spotted python. And they're just a little bit more interesting than something like a ball python or corn snake, the way that they walk around, well not walk around as if they have legs, the way they move around, slither around, the fact that they're arboreal, the fact they eat so well, they're not that expensive to buy. You can probably buy them for $150, $200, maybe a little bit more expensive. I really do think they're gonna make my list for things that are gonna jump in price next year. But with that said, it's just, that's how it works. There's, right now there's quite a bit of supply for the amount of demand, but I think the demand is gonna start going way higher than the supply, which is how things work. Think Dumeril's boas, Mexican black king snakes, et cetera. That's just how it goes. And then eventually the price will even out probably in three or four years. So overall, I think that if you're looking for a smaller type python, something that is gonna be great for handling, something that's a little bit different, so impressive because it's different, like he's handcuffing me. Just think like a mini reticulated python that isn't quite as small and doesn't have the same sort of food drive. That's basically, in my opinion, what a spotted python is, and I think that they're the coolest pythons in town. But I want you to tell me what you think. Do you think that these guys are gonna be that popular? Have you ever considered getting a spotted python, children's python, pygmy python? Let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And a special thanks as always to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, extra videos. You guys get all that and more for as little as $1 a month. And that's it, because I do videos twice a week. That means I'll see you in the next one.